Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, it looks like we have some interesting conversation going on. So we have Nafish, Chong, uh, Amin. Uh, we're missing another student. Uh, let's wait uh, a few more minutes. Uh, so. Okay, I guess we can start. Uh, this, yeah. So, uh, this is the paper. Uh, I, for the shapely value, uh, it's actually one of the most highly cited the uh, paper recently. <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, and also is uh. Yeah, this is graduate student. Uh, this is a PhD advisor. Uh, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a paper uh, about how to uh, interpret it in uh, machine learning. Uh, although the title says interpreting model prediction, that, that model is really a uh, I guess that's correct because it can be a linear model. It doesn't have to be a complex model. This using uh that model can be a linear model, which is very straightforward, I guess. Yeah. So that's the so the so the title uh okay, it seems to make sense. Uh yeah. I mean even though we use it quite a lot of our, uh machine learning, but uh, it's actually applicable just to simple models. So so the, of course, it's more useful when the model is hard. Uh, so the idea is uh, how to explain uh, complex models. Um, and they, they also predict a so-called a unified framework for interpreting predictions, shape, shapely additive explanations. Uh, Shape. Uh, okay, P is the third letter. Okay, but that's what they pick. <laughs> okay, shape. Uh, shape assess each feature. Uh, important for. Uh, by the way, uh, what do you read this sentence for a particular prediction? Uh, that means Shapley value is calculated for each input. So this is this that is actually not for public. It's this is a very important sentence here actually, for a particular prediction. That means it's it is a very uh, sample specific calculation. So which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, of course, very often we don't calculate. We don't want to just know shape feature work for one particular sample. We want to know. How feature work for a group of sample. 
that means we need to aggregate this, calculate the uh, locality, the distributions. So, okay. So this is the, uh, but by definition, this Shapley value is actually calculated for a particular prediction. Well, one prediction in this case, simply that one input. That's a good point. Uh, we do assuming we have a feature to prediction or um, a multiple to one match here. So I guess in theory, this can be extended to a multi-objective. Uh, okay, I'm gonna leave that discussion elsewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'm, uh, uh, I think I'm, uh, I need to focus, just present this paper, not uh, <laughs> leave the discussion at the end, sorry. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, well, as the title suggests, this is the additive explanation model. So uh, after reading, uh, I mean, when I first read this, this is a freshly new idea, but after I read this paper, they cite a lot of our previous work, uh, we're, we're all similar work. So, uh, so I'm actually, I was also surprised they cite a lot of a Shapley value already applied. So it's not clear why this paper become, when we, every time we apply the Shapley value, this is the paper we cited. <laughs> this paper itself actually cited a lot of other Shapley value application. Uh, anyhow, uh, uh, but uh, that's, I guess they do provide a very useful software package. Yeah, they, they, they do have these uh, software packages there. So that is very convenient, yeah, so. Yeah, I think this package is also used in a uh, Python package itself. So you can install it using click and install. I see, I see. So I think that's why there's like this high amount of citation. I see, yeah. It's, uh... yeah. So uh, it, there's also a lot of uh, actually, uh, tutorial and YouTube video and, and uh, bloggers are many things uh, out there to explain this, yeah. But uh, of course we go back to the primary research paper to actually look at the, uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> so the paper is uh, five sections, uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. Well, six section, the last one is conclusion. It does a, a major part is five seconds. The first part is the introduction. And the second part is a list the previous method. And the third uh, third part is uh, listing the major method. Why uh, why this the uh, additive feature can have all this property. And the fourth part formally introduce the shape value. Uh, and then, uh, it, then it actually, uh, the last part provide the computing and, and the experimental result. But the fourth part also provides some uh, estimation method, how to estimate the shape play value. So, uh, the most, actually, here's uh, the most important uh, part of the paper here. So, uh, before this paper, apparently there are other methods like uh, LIME uh, method, uh, and they are so-called a deep lift method, layer-wise relevance propagation method, and also, the classical Shapley value estimation, which is the, it looks like based on mathematical combinatory uh, theory. And um, there, uh, actually a set, you can actually see the set theory there. So, and then they summarize all those premise method can follow this uh, linear pattern, which uh, this, uh, so there's the uh, uh, phi zero, which is the base value. And then there's this additive part. Uh, 
additive part uh, for to calculate the feature uh, to this G value. Oh, I see. I uh, I missed. Uh, sorry, I my bad. Uh, I need to explain why they are doing this. So uh, here is actually the part. So they have an original function f, and they want to use another function to explain it. Say so g function g to explain function f. So F could be deep learning, random forest, something we do not understand. It's so complicated, we do not understand. G is a simple function. Um, in this case, a linear combination, like G function, this is just a, this is just a linear combination, additive linear combination function, right? So uh, that, oops, I delete everything, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, so basically, they the uh, they want to use f. Uh, they want to use g, which is the explanation model to approximate the f, which is the original uh, model. Could be a deep learning or, or uh, uh, something so complicated, uh, we uh, uh, we actually it's hard to explain. And um, but the g in this case, this is the linear additive model, which. I guess human human intuition is built on the linear uh, regression. We draw a line, so it's it seems like we can interpret the uh, a point on the line much better than uh, deep learning with all those convoluted uh, things altogether. So this that's uh, their uh, philosophical kind of a uh, that's how the model is set using G to approximate uh, approximate F. And so they're also focusing on this so-called local method. Basically, fx is a single input. And then they uh, approximate uh, and use the, the G will uh, focus on so-called simplified S prime as well. Yeah, this is an interesting idea. Um, so there's the original input x to use the explanation model, the, we also use a simplified input x prime. And this may or may not be the case because x prime can equal to s, x. But they do actually, for general uh, generalizability, they actually offer this mapping function, which is hx. They actually map the simplified x prime to x uh, for the mathematical rigor, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, in many cases, we we'll probably just can approximate x and x prime are the same, uh, especially if it's the deep, uh, like multi layer perception, you have the fifth input. I mean, in that case, x and the prime seem to be the same, right? So, but this is kind of generalizable uh, definition. Uh, I guess <clears throat> even for the multi-layer perceptron, you, we could imagine we have some mapping function, uh, do some feature engineering, convert those into something else, I guess. Yeah. So, okay, but that's the generali uh, generalized version of this. Uh, which means uh, this basically what this means uh, uh, for a feature z prime, uh, we take a function of g that should approximate, which is a convert the z prime into the original input, take the original function. That's basically is the the oops uh, yeah. That's actually is the the key part of this paper. Yeah. Oh, uh, blue on dark is not a good idea. Uh, can we change it to green? Oh, no. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Light green may be better. So that's really the key idea here. To make the original function f explainable, we use g to approximate. 
And this G is basically this. Oops, sorry. Uh, I wish there is a undo button, but I couldn't find that one. Uh, there must be an undo button somewhere. I don't see it. Uh, huh. uh, there used to be an undo button somewhere. I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, and if you look at this one, this is basically assuming uh, this is add everything up, all this, each individual uh, feature we have a coefficient in front of it, we just sum them up. So this is assuming everything is additive and independent. So simplified feature input, uh, the prime into the, that's the original function is this uh, hx prime uh, converted back into the original input and the f is the original function, so yeah. Uh Dr. Chin, there's a question in the chat. There's a question in the chat, sorry. Uh, it's existing a model, GZ prime approximate FX, why don't we use GZ prime model for a final picture? Uh, because GZ prime usually is not a good model. Uh, it's a linear model. Okay. It's, uh, besides, it's the... Uh, the, the key part is that, that G prime is input specific, but that the F prime is a generalized model for every input. Right, so you cannot uh, you cannot apply that G Z prime to the entire sample because every time the weight is different. It's not generalized uh, a model, so. So because uh, each feature works differently in each uh, input, right? So that G prime is, is doesn't exist for the every, uh, is different for every input, right? So. Uh, good question though. Uh, yeah. uh, huh. uh, I'm, I'm, if you have, I'm pretty sure everyone. Uh, okay, that actually, that, problem didn't occur to me. I, I'm not sure why I never found that confusing. Uh, I guess because if you actually use the Shapley value to do the calculation, you will find out each input sequence has different Shapley value output. That means their fee coefficient are different, which means of course you cannot apply that uh, G prime G function to the entire sample because uh, each model had different coefficient, right? So for the coefficient is different for every input. And generally when we train a machine learning model, we have a final model which apply to every sample. We didn't say we have a model, but for every input we have different parameter. That seemed to be lose the whole purpose of having a model, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, good question though. Yeah, that's, that's a good, uh, uh, I think like I want like maybe you can clarify whether my understanding is correct or not. So in that case, because we have like different input and for each of the input we have one specific model. So if we want to mimic the original function, we'll have to stack up all these models. Is that like the correct interpretation? Uh, in a way, the original f will correspond to so many different g for each sample. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. That's a good question, yeah. Uh, that's a good point, yeah. But each feature, they basically, they not say each feature, the G is still correspond to the same mathematical form. But each sample, uh, what's different is those, uh, oh, I'm glad we are having this discussion. Each sample going to have different fee, uh, fee uh, this, sorry. Uh, I really wish I can have a, undo button, figure out. Uh, each sample going to have a different uh, phi i. That's what will be different. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I guess if I, if I had to rewrite this, this i uh, is actually for feature. But for if I have to write for each sample, I'm going to write I, J, J for the sample and I for the feature, which means 
for every j there are different i right so this is uh i guess if you really write this out yes for every uh input j there's a different i so so this basically the g function is sample specific but the f function is model is the is general generalizable model so Actually, I'm going to leave there because that's uh, seems to be a, a good good point to 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 look at this uh, function. Yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, here, uh, if we go back, we emphasize this is what they call local method, basically explain a prediction based on one simple input. So that's an important one. But F is a, a, a fitted model will be up, applied to every X, but this G uh, we have a different coefficient when we uh, estimate that. So, so uh, yeah. So that's the general definition of the Shapley value uh, to start with. But this is actually uh, is one of the most important equation here. Uh, if you actually look at this, you will realize the, this is basically linear regression. Uh, we did a linear, it actually occurred in many, many cases, uh, including uh, uh, in, in uh, a lot of healthcare, uh, what a human trade like a, a population study with, uh, uh, like uh, uh, people uh, like when they breed uh, uh, plants who make a, a fruit grow bigger or uh, quantitative trade analysis. This is a lot of uh, this is um, basically a linear quantitative linear regression model with weights. Um, so. So <clears throat> this is oh I I did wrote a, this is a so called a local model for one feature. Uh, uh, one input, which means that that phi i will change for every input. So phi i. Uh, varies for each input. So I think there's another question. Is this method can apply for deep learning? Yeah, I mean isn't the the the, the, the part the later uh, section four. Uh, in fact he actually discussed the uh, Deep lift. There's already a, a existing method called deep lift, which use a recursive method. Da, da, da. Uh, but this is a existing method. Uh, I'm not sure why people don't use it. I guess it's uh, they call it a C delta x i delta y represent a family input and for a reference. Okay, so this one neither actually a Shapley value also need a reference. Um, as opposed to the original value, this means that they believe uh, this. So this is the uh, existing method. They generalize this method later on. Uh, so, and this is a classical, at the bottom, that's the classical Shapley value. Uh, and that's actually basically, uh, so I think S is a sample. All the all the possibility. So the f is still the. Oh, that's how the phi i is calculated. Uh, so in this case, uh, this this phi i is calculated for every input. Uh, if you look at this, it it does look at the, when it original calculate is going to calculate the the prediction. The minus that 
uh, that seem to be a reference to something uh, uh, with all those combinations here. So the F, what is F? Oh, uh, F is a feature, S is a subset. Uh, so the S is a subset feature to use to explain this input. Uh, so the I must be, XI must be that feature. Uh, so I see. So here, uh, that's the definition. So F with S union with I is changed with that feature present. And F, uh, FS is changed with that feature withhold. So this is uh, not present. So then this one is present. And it makes sense, right? So the feature present minus feature not present, but then with all this company, I, I'm not sure why there's uh, this combinatorial uh, coefficient there. Uh, ah, there must be all those combination with the feature. So you have the entire feature S. as Yes, so there will be a lot of all those combination calculate and then you average them. Uh, so, yeah, so this is look like the original feature is a serious uh, combinatorial definition. Uh, and this, of course, doesn't really apply to the deep learning when all these features are convoluted, uh, especially for image, I guess. Yeah, so, but this is the original Shapley value. Uh, so. And then they actually summarize what is a good uh, property to explain this, um, including the local accuracy. This makes sense. Basically, for the uh, for the local uh, model, when you, the, all the features are there, is going to equal to the original prediction. It makes sense. I mean, it should be consistent. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this by definition, if this doesn't even hold. Uh, really with not good to explain anything. So th this makes sense. Uh, so uh, the second one is called missingness. And honestly, I, I don't see how this is automatically, basically if that feature is uh, not there at uh, the coefficient should be zero, uh, that depends on estimation, I mean, uh, but I guess it doesn't matter because the, if it's zero, that coefficient, no matter what value there is, still, still going to zero. But here's a, a problem though. Uh, because the feature is zero, that coefficient can vary to non-zero. You can still keep the first equation consistent. Yeah, this is, uh, honestly, the second part, I don't know how it holds, except they say this should be there. and. So I uh I also don't see any proof this has to be maintained. Uh, so but uh, it's just say when the feature is missing, the coefficient is zero. But honestly, I don't know why. <laughs> so I don't see why it has to be zero because the you can see when the x is zero, that phi can be any value. You still has to be zero. So. Now the phi i doesn't has to be zero. I mean, if you for just for that equation to hold, but I don't know why this one is holding there. So uh, I'm going to let your uh, PhD student to explore why that holds. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the second one, uh, I'm not the second one. The third one, what is what they call consistency. Uh, this actually also makes sense if you really read into that. Uh, what basically says is, uh, let me see, uh, let me look at my notes uh, before the class. Uh, uh, consistency.
Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I didn't write it here, so I forgot. So, uh, z prime equals zero. That basically that feature is not there. So, yeah, I, this is really odd definition. So, z prime backslash i means that feature is not there. So. And this basically means convert back into an original feature. So we have the, so that's, so we have this function, uh, means feature is a zero. And we have Z prime. Oh, wait, this is, uncom this is simplified Z prime. Why? I don't see HX there. Is this is this a typo? Oh no 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 no! I'm sorry. So they call this as fx. Okay, sorry. It is hx, but they uh, they apply the fx uh, directly here. So uh, I wouldn't do this. Uh, what advantage does it have? Uh, I confuse people. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but anyhow, apparently the fx prime they define. Is the fx with hx? Uh, is that the case? Uh, wait, hold on. But this one also has the f prime. So, so the fx z prime is the f with the fx z. But f prime. Uh, okay, this is the the previous function. So fx fz. I guess f prime is just follow the same definition also means hx is also there uh okay what well, this means we have a, uh, a model with that feature there and not there this means present and the difference is that the new model must greater than that uh okay uh i forgot why in this case uh I forgot what f prime is. Uh, for any model f and a prime, if, oh, I see, if that holds, uh, then phi prime, oh, I see, okay, so, uh, okay, my apologies, I, I finally get it. So uh, that's uh, actually the definition. Uh, so basically, if uh, for any model f, f prime, if that, feature present and not present are holds, and then the coefficient uh, follow the same trend. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. Uh, basically, if there's a better model, let's say F prime is a better model than F, and, uh, and there's a feature present and not there, and F prime have a better performance, and they will argue that the coefficient in F prime is also greater. Uh, Dr. Chen, I was thinking, can we assume f prime as a model that we can use to explain f better, or make the uh no f prime and f they are both fitted the model. For example, uh, we have image classification. We, we can have a multi layer perceptron, uh, which is the f. We have a f prime convolutional classification. The convolution probably deep learning with small layer probably works better than the f. But we use G to explain both F prime and F G, but the G is just a linear additive, right? So, and for the same input feature, let's say a, a, a phase or some other phase or animal's phase, and we classify into cat and dog. And that phase, if the, the uh, for the convolutional neural network, it works better, and that uh, coefficient should also higher in the Shapley value for the convolution in neural network. Uh, that's my understanding here. So also oh, F, F prime performs better than F for the right, right. So here F prime performance that's that's what the 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 uh the this condition means F prime you have the feature uh face present and not present that that difference is bigger than the F which is uh, a different model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So uh, assuming the prediction here is a probability, uh, so F prime, you have the face which is present and not present. The difference of that, uh, let's say this is a convolution neural network. This one is MLP. Mm -hmm. yeah. The difference between that probability is probably bigger in the convolution classification. Say this is cat, that's a dog. And convolution neural network, I have 90%, 0.9 is a cat. The MLP may say 0.5 is a cat. And, and, and then we apply Shapley value to F and F prime will find that the fee, uh, fee for the convolutional neural network should be bigger than the MLP so for the same like, yeah, yes. Kind of like F prime is identifying that I is actually important feature to identify the face. So that's why it has like- uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, that I is a feature, let's say the face, yeah. Yes. So. so that's why it can identify the face better. So the Shapley value is higher. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it, I got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, it makes sense now. I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't know why they, I, I will use different symbol to <laughs> instead of, a, I, I don't, I, I don't see the advantage of here, why uh, you shorten the symbol, yeah, so. Uh, so, okay, uh, they actually uh, apparently approved this. Uh, based on the Shapley value definition and way to go. That's what the PhD does. <laughs> so uh, I actually, I didn't even get into the, how they prove this. Uh, I think they also provide supplementary document to, to prove this, yeah, but uh, I didn't spend time to do that. And you actually can see, they just mentioned um, some of those proof probably, blah, blah, but there's a lot of things uh, you can look in the supplementary information. Uh, I encourage all the students to look at the supplement document. I'm going to skip it over <laughs> now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is what the, that the PhD student uh, take pride of. I mean, he actually proved this. Yeah. So, uh, so <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah. So, they, they they show that a linear additive and then they propose formally propose this Shapley additive explainable value shape values. So yeah, I mean this is big deal. I mean having used uh, so many times, so this is big deal. So yeah. So so they, they now formally propose Shapley value as a unified measure of feature importance. And these are a Shapley value, uh, basically of a conditional expectation function of the original input. Uh, this is actually, uh, uh, this is, you will see this figure in a lot of blog and uh, YouTube video tutorials. And uh, I'm also a very, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad I choose this paper again because uh, this, and every time I look at this, I I, I have a new uh, appreciate uh, understanding uh, how the Shapley value work actually. <laughs> so I was also confused about the base value, but now uh, I look at the figure and I realize the base value fee zero with expectation right there. So basically, the fee the base value is uh, the base value base say. Uh, Remove all the features. What's the expectation that there? That's the expectation. Uh, so that's a P zero. Uh, if you if we go back to the definition there, P zero, and then we actually make sense now. Uh, all other features are not there. You have the fee P zero, and there that's the base value on this plot. Uh, <clears throat> And every other feature, uh, the coefficient is there. Uh, it's going to either help uh, in one direction. Consider the prediction is a binary, zero and one. So if the feature is not zero, uh, all features are, uh, are not there is zero, and you have a phi zero, that's the base prediction. But if feature are there, you have one, it's going to move towards that the one direction. 
if it help you predict that one uh, for binary. Uh, but there are some feature actually work uh, backwards, move to zero. So I, I, they give it a red color here, like a feature number four is, uh, yeah, that's the red one. Uh, but feature one, two, and the three, and the blue one. Uh, apparently, there's also an order uh, here, uh, X1, X2, uh, you, you actually can see X1, uh, X1 here, right? So, but it assumes all the feature are independent additive. So we put X2 and then now the prediction goes here. So that's what the, the uh, uh, additive means. And since all the feature are either zero and one, and that basically uh, coefficient are there, phi one, phi two, because that's phi, phi one times one, phi two times one, right? If it's a feature are not there, uh, x1, x2 become zero, it goes back to the phi zero. So, and uh, here's a, uh, but this is part of, I'm also a bit, uh, Apparently, assume there's the order here, uh, x1, x2, x3, x4. That's how the feature added up. Uh, I think there's some question regarding f prime and f. What is the relation? Simply version. Uh, no, the f prime is basically here. Uh, f prime is just a different uh, f function. Better, better model. Right. Yeah, the, I, let's say. Uh, I mean, I guess they call F1, F2, that's that's also another way. I guess if you call the F, F prime, then there's a third function, you may have to call it F prime prime. <laughs> so F prime prime prime. So, but it's easier if I, if I were the, the one write the paper, I may call it F1, F2, F3. But I guess then there's also confusion. What is that one, two, three, four stands for? Yeah. I mean, people have different style to write their papers, right? So, uh, so in this case, F prime just means a different F. So, uh, according to here, you see, for any two models here, here, for any two models, F and F prime. So if you, it actually says here, it's just two different models. So. And which means if you compare three model, they will say for any three model F, F prime, F prime prime. <laughs> so I guess you, then you have to do that. Uh, you, in, my, in my view, maybe it's easier to, for any three model F1, F2, F3. Uh, oh, I see. But then if you go back to the original uh, F, F, then, you don't have that. Okay, I see. The way they choose also had an advantage because they don't have to rewrite their paper, say F, F1. They can just always say F. I mean, the, the, the way they choose, it does have their own advantage. Yeah, so, so yeah. Uh, good question. Uh, so, uh, uh, The, the, the entire paper now uh, actually trying to, this was a proposed, they actually use uh, now just to, since already proves this, they are going to just use different way to estimate this Shapley value. Because the, the original Shapley value is defined using this uh, combinatorial, which is, challenging if not possible for say machine learning like a deep learning uh, that must be very uh at, at least computational will be prohibitive if we do all this combinatorial so uh so uh and apparently they do this approximation assuming uh, we have a simplified input. Uh, this is actually quite important. This, this is how they approximately, this four, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, this, the four equation, 
looks like a harmless, uh, but is actually just they justify how this can be used to approximate the shape plate value in practice. So basically, this is the uh, input feature uh, in the original function for the prediction. And uh, so this is just a, a, a shape plate value by definition with the expectation. But then uh, this is the expectation when the subset is there. If you if you screen uh, zoom up, you will see this is the uh, with the subset feature, but the rest of the subset uh, as I guess in set theory you have subset, and which is the opposite to the what's I forgot the in set theory or combinatorial what's the word for that minus I guess the com oh, complementary. Right, right, the complementary uh, of the S. Uh, sorry, someone may need to double check. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm using the right terminology or not, but the, basically just the opposite of the S. Uh, I see Dr. Sakib knocking his head, so I guess I'm around, on the right track. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think it's complementary. Is it complementary? I okay, yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, uh, and then you actually see the hold on, F S. I guess that F D uh, is related to that uh, Z S. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Z is a particular feature. Z. Oh, I see. Z is the input. S is the feature. Okay. Now, now it all makes sense. Okay. So we have that prediction uh, with that feature, and then. Simple. Uh, the question is why the G is not there. Um, I guess that's a, that's the expectation. Assuming feature are independent. Uh, okay. Uh, question: Why the G function is there, not there? A anyone? Uh, I mean, if you want to explain that, shouldn't you use a G to explain that? Uh, I'm, I just realized that I thought I already understand this this part, but uh, why the G function is not there? Um. Huh, okay. Uh yeah, people say teaching is the best way to learn. I just realized I didn't fully understand this the four equation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought that I understand this four equation, but apparently not. Uh it seems like it's a model agnostic approximation. Uh it, it is, but it can also be model specific, for example, like a, a deep learning a deep shape. It can be specific to deep learning, though. So it it is it, uh, 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 if you just apply the regression model, it can be model agnostic. So it, so it actually shape plate value is model agnostic, but it can also be model specific. Yeah. So uh, uh, of course, it's a linear. Oh, I see. If it's a linear model, and then we. Of course, that F is approximately the G. Uh, so, by this model agnostic, I just realized those are basically is the G function. So, to so the G function, uh, when 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 it is used here, is abstractive. 
But here, the expectation of those is actually trying to estimate that G function when, when it's a linear. So, yeah, they basically use conditional expectation to estimate it. I see. Okay, I, I think I, I now understand. Those are basically, that actually is trying to estimate the G function. Oh, uh, I'm I'm glad uh, we 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 went through this. Um, so that is the f function. But what those expectation, uh, if I'm understanding, those are trying to estimate the g function. They are, they are basically estimate the expectation with the linear additive assumption. Yeah. So, in fact, here assuming model linearity, you can even switch the. Uh, uh, Apparently, uh, for expectation, linear inside the linear outside should be approximately the same. It's not strictly equal, it's approximate. Uh, so, uh, that must be something uh, well, well known in statistical data science. Uh, it seems like they just assume there's a, line, a linearity, they just move that F sign outside. So, yeah. um, if there's one question. Yeah, sure. Oh, like it, in the chat, someone asked that. If oh, how do Shepi Valley choose a good subject? No, they don't really choose a good subject. They just gave you, assuming it's a linear, they just gave you the, the fee. Uh, since all the value, uh, all the fees are either zero or one, so the, the larger the fee, the bet, the more important that feature is. So that's my understanding. I, I, but I think that's, uh, if I understand, that's basically the weight, right? So the, the, the larger the fee is the better that the feature is. And the feature here is just use the zero and one. Uh, if feature is there or not, uh, right, so, yeah. Uh, and honestly, how this method to uh, uh, estimate, they actually had to show the proof again. Uh, uh, I have to admit, I, I never look at the proof in the supplementary. I assume they're all correct. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, this PhD student apparently spent four or five years to prove those things, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. so, this is a, uh, it looks like this is uh, actually, yeah, they basically use a linear form. We did a linear regression for the model agnostic. So the model agnostic approximation minus, if I read this correctly, it is basically a weighted linear regression. So, uh, of course they do that because they prove that is the way to do it. Uh, yeah. So, I'm I'm pretty sure many people will apply linear regression, but here they actually prove this is the right way to. Uh, approximator. So that's what the PhD come from. So yeah. Uh, geez, that's uh this is a serious proof. Uh I have to say I didn't even look at it. <laughs> Someone spent uh, probably a long time to prove it. <laughs> so I encourage some of you look at it. <laughs> so yeah. And then the uh we discussed uh so there's a linear, this is model agnostic. So this is 4.1, this is model agnostic approximation, which is basically, uh, we did linear regression, regression. And they proved this, yeah, so. So this is model agnostic approximation and then they have the model uh, specific. And uh, this is uh, interesting. If it's a linear, the model itself is a linear, then uh, you will have a linear <laughs> model specific. So that's kind of a, uh, expected, I guess. But of course, the good thing is that you do see now they had the expectation and the weights 
are more clearly defined. It's more intuitive, I guess. Yeah, so. But the, then uh, shows a few other. Uh, yeah, the, apparently they apply the diff deep lift with Shapley value. Then they can calculate the deep uh, shape value. Basically, minus and they just apply that deep lift, the previous method, but now combined with a Shapley value. And in this case, they do need a some reference. Uh, and that actually in practice does means how do you pick the reference? So in this case, uh, if I understand correctly, in practice, when you pick those references, it does lead to different Shapley value. Uh, I guess in theory, you can say sample does follow distribution. You pick a reference, follow the same distribution, pick another and follow the same, it shouldn't matter. But in practice, this actually really matters, especially for the unbalanced data set. Uh, <clears throat> some of the category, you have a small uh, a set of uh, 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 input data than other, then there's just not much choice. Uh, so, so, yeah, but for some reason, this also come back to linear approximation. Uh, but it does actually, if I understand it, it does also <clears throat> goes to the the example. Uh, hold on, why is there's F three here? Um, now I I look at this. The F three. There are also F J. They 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 actually now come with a different F now, huh? Uh. Sorry, I this didn't caught my attention when I first read the paper. Now, <laughs> when I try to explain that, I realize there are different F now. Uh, I saw this is just one fitted model. Why then there are multiple F here? Uh, anyone found how they where where they explain the F three F J? Uh, Uh, I think the question I think is the first place where they use F3. Oh, in that figure, figure two. Sorry, sorry, figure two. Uh, figure two. That explain F1, F2, F3. I see, I see. Okay. Sorry, uh, actually, oh, I actually drew a line back to the other side, but when I explained, I forgot. <laughs> okay, uh, gee, uh, so I actually drew a line back to that figure to show where that was. Okay, I, I forgot my own notes, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, so that's where the F1, F2, F3 is, so, uh, Uh, and that's interesting. That means there are multiple input. There, are... x one, x two is that's two input or two feature. Uh, okay. Uh, what's in the text? Uh, so I have a y one, y two, f one, f two, x one, x two, then f y, f three. Uh. I was thinking with the Y1 and Y2 are like the inputs and they're trying to approximate F3 using F1 and F2. You look at that's back, prop, back propagation they are trying to illustrate. It, it, it looks like so this is 
uh, trying to il illustrate back propagation. Uh, uh, I have to say I didn't really fully understand the deep lift uh, method, but it looked like they're just applying that deep lift in combine uh, with the shapely value. So because the uh, I saw that's really I, I just skipped over the deep lift and it looked like now I had we I had to really re understand that part. So uh, recursive operating for deep learning. Uh, okay, it actually does say to, uh, this needs a reference value, the deep lift that explains why we have to apply shapely value also when deep to deep learning also need a, a reference value. Uh, since that's actually part of the original deep lift uh, method as well. I value current And uh, this is so brief with not even explanation what that the C delta X is. So I, uh, I guess unless we read the original paper, uh, I honestly do not understand this. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, what the delta O here means, I, sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. O is the fx, which is the prediction, uh, but what is the delta O? That means there's a different something, um, not the output delta O. Oh, actually, they define delta O like this. fx, fr, r is a reference. Mm -hmm. This actually seems to make sense now. Uh, okay, uh, r is a reference point, okay. Uh, this is just look this sentence is just not right uh o is fx delta o means fx minus fr uh, oh i see they are defining delta o is okay so uh okay i mean i guess you can define anything you like <laughs> so <laughs> delta o equal fx minus fr so yeah so that's what the, the definition is so Uh, this is interesting. Phi zero is basically FR. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, this has been, uh, I, I'm glad I'm uh, reading this again in much detail. I always wonder how do they calculate the phi zero for deep learning part? And this is how they calculate that. Yeah. Is that just based on the reference point? Uh, huh, very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is this is helpful. Uh, so for deep learning, that phi zero is basically directly calculated from the reference point with respect to the uh, feature. So that feature has to be exist in the reference input and the current input x. Okay. Okay. Very very. very uh, this is helpful. So. Uh, <clears throat> and now we come back to here. Uh, if I understood correctly, now they are trying to illustrate how they use deep learning to do the backward propagation then, but estimation, so with a reference point there. So uh, apparently, this backward propagation still use a linear approximation. So, this is an extremely slow process, uh, from what I uh, see from my students doing this. Yeah. 
Yeah. Calculating this for the large deep learning sample take a very long time. So, yeah. uh, I'm not sure why it is so slow. Uh, since the deep learning model is already trained, why so slow? Uh, oh, because deep learning has so many layers, so many parameters. If you do a back propagation to estimate them. So that basically is the churning process all over again. I see that's why it's so slow. It's not applying the model directly. It's actually back propagation time to estimate the fee for every input. I see. Ah, okay. That's why it's so slow. It's basically just like the churning process. But back propagation trying to estimate the fee value, the fee here. For well, every input. I see. Now uh, that makes sense why it is so slow. Okay. Okay. Uh... Yeah. The rest of them is actually not that uh, it's basically a simulation experimental result uh, uh, to show, uh, I guess, yeah, basically they want to show how this outperform any other previous result. And this is also an interesting part. Um, applying shape value for uh, Image classification. Uh, this is interesting because the so this is eight. Explain eight. Not many blue, you see. Oh, sorry. I uh, let me. Uh, this is really uh, shocking. Remember the blue. Uh, blue means it contribute to the feature. Red means it's not. Mm -hmm. If I understand this, uh, you see. I'm gonna. For the eight to explain number, to this is eight, only a tiny bit of the blue here. I think in this case, probably it says red areas increase the probability. No, no, red means it's, it's not helpful to explain eight, if I understand this correct. So it basically contributed to the probability of eight, the blue part is helpful. Uh, I guess that's that looks right because the red part you can interpret as other number three like a three. For the three part, you see, now the red become blue here. Actually, okay, now it actually seems to make sense. See, uh, for the three, you see the red in the eight now become blue in three. So I okay, I, I'm glad I, I'm going through this because that now might seem to make sense. So if if we pay attention to this part and this part, it's red in eight, blue in three, because this image is eight, but when it's actually classified as three, is why it's classified as three is this blue part. So I guess if you want to write three, you can write something like this. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, but if you write the eight, uh, that has to be an eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, uh, huh? Uh, that that is actually uh, which model they use? Convolutional neural network for classification? I I, I don't. Uh, what what model do you use for the convolution neural network? Yeah, for MINIST. Okay, so that is interesting. I actually didn't know convolution neural network just use a tiny bit of feature for this 
classification accuracy. I mean, if I remember convolution easily get uh, more than 90% accuracy, but what actually work is just a fraction of those features, like for eight is just this point. That is interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, so. Okay, so this is a good example to to show how the shapely value works, I guess, yeah. And you can compare with the previous method. In the previous method, the deep lift uh, apparently only identified this tiny bit of eight contributing eight. They improved, oh, that, that's actually similar to shapely value. Look, you see the pattern is also similar. And this is, I forgot, this is a linear binary something. Oh, it's also, but it's also there, but you see there's a, a lot of a noise on the side as well. You see a lot of blue on the side. So apparently linear, it works, but there's also a lot of background noise there. So it is interesting. I mean, it seems to be very useful, uh, especially uh, this part, I mean, it, it shows like for the number, the image eight is called eight. Apparently not everything is used there for deep learning to predict the number eight. It's those blue things. Uh, interesting result. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I didn't put the supplementary information there. So uh, I'll be impressed some uh, some the student present a supplementary document shows how proof things. <laughs> Sorry, no pressure though. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, uh, questions or, uh, actually I even have more questions after I go through this, but <laughs> there's a lot of questions now. Uh, yeah, this this part uh, I thought I uh, I have read this part uh, many times. Uh, I thought I understand apparently still not. Uh, but this is a very important part. That's how they justify the approximation. Yeah. So. Equation nine to twelve. Uh, that's the part. Uh, uh, I thought I understand apparently still not. Uh, Uh, any of you uh, have a inside how uh, 9, 10, 11, 2 related to the explainable function G? Uh, no. What? Uh, I mean, we, we, we can... Uh, uh, okay, I guess uh, since I'm the uh, instructor, Give this presentation. I show you. I still don't know many other things. So you, you, you. That gave you uh, on the positive side. That gave you some excuse when you put on paper. You made a mistake and say I don't understand. That's okay. If I'm fine, <laughs> you will be fine. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, Uh, I can tell like how you can get 11 from 12. I understood those two plot. Oh, which plot? Uh, uh, from 10 to 11, because it assumes which are the time. So, oh, basically, so basically, ZS time and ZS, so they're basically like, they do not overlap. So you can approximate 10 to 11 based on just, based, I, I could figure out 10 and 11. Uh, I see, yeah. 
Yeah, because like it's feature independence, right? So that don't really. Yeah, right, yeah. I I guess my my question is that that's uh that's they use that to say this going to how to they going to estimate the Shapley value, but the Shapley value is based on explainable model G. Yeah. I I just cannot connect a question nine to twelve to that explainable model G. Exactly. I, I guess my my guess is that the expectation is G, but I'm not sure. That's my question. Yeah, that uh, the F that uh, uh, F on the left hand side that's a, a model. The expectation on the right hand side, I want if I understand it correctly, it should be G. But then at the bottom, I see the F actually taken outside of it. I think I think but, you're right. I think you're right. So I think the baseline would be like what is the average, uh, average behavior of the model? What is the expected behavior of the model? And you are taking very specific input, very specific sample, and you are trying to figure out like which, how this sample varies, deviates from the uh, uh, average behavior mm. using that shape of values. Is that what this nine to twelve trying to? Yeah. Uh... We probably have to. Uh... Use some example sample code to 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 better estimate. Actually, uh, so I don't. I think your your assumption is right in this case. G is the approximate or the expected value. Oh. I think. Uh. Okay. Uh, thanks for the support. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what I think. That that's, oh, okay. that makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm I'm trying to uh find out the, the my uh. Tutorial code for the Shapley value. Try, try to see what the. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I actually did have a Shapley value. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share uh, my uh, sample code. So I did have a, a sample code for the Shapley value. Uh, I, I can't even put that there. This is actually from the online tutorial. I just uh, redo that myself. Uh, I forgot which blog. Oh, actually, I gave the link there. The data is from Kaggle. The tutorial is there, Beta Data Science, Shapley Value. So, uh, but, uh, so <clears throat> apparently, this is the XG Boost model. Uh, that's the data set. Uh, I, I guess those are the features. Uh, so that's something like a one quality prediction. Yeah, one quality, a uh, wide one quality prediction. So <clears throat> you have the quality score at the, at the last, and then all those are features uh, there. So, so. <clears throat> Uh, so why chain, uh, what is why? Yes, why the quality and everything else is the feature X. So, uh, <clears throat> and we XG boost classifying, that's the model, that's the model F. And then, Explainer Shapley value applied to that model. That's the model G explainer. So uh fit with that model. That's the that's model is trained here, XG boost. Uh oh, this is actually just apply a tree explainer. That's actually Shapley with a tree explainer. Um, I don't remember why I choose it or the tutorial. This is not the tree experiment. That means we are not using a linear regression. Um, huh. Apparently there's a, uh, using a tree method to estimate uh, that uh, Shapley value. Oh, uh, well, 
Wait, 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 wait. Even for the backward uh, propagation, it doesn't look like a tree. So uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we, uh, I, I suggest all the students go to read the uh, Shapley value tree explainer package to to see what what exactly that tree explainer does. So, but that's the package I use. Uh, I'll find the tutorial. We, we calculate that explainer function. So. And that's how uh, we get the <clears throat> shape play value. So the blue are the one uh, positively contribute to the quality, red are the one goes backwards. Uh, minus thing in there. Is that? Uh, I missed some JavaScript. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, this is the useful plot. So it shows alcohol, mean Shapley value, but they don't show the positive and negative sign. So I'm not sure. Uh, the, but it does show alcohol feature seem to be associated with the quality here. Five, uh, honestly, I don't even know which one has a better quality for the quality score. I just know there's a zero, uh, like a seven uh, category of uh, wines here. Uh, I'm, I don't even know whether zero is the best one or six is the best one. But, uh, but you, you do see it, it seems to make sense. I mean, alcohol feature co correlate to the quality of the wine, but then the next one will be a free sulfur dioxide density, sulfate, or the citric acid, <clears throat> pH, uh, other things. Uh, there's actually something called the summary plot. Uh, so here it's actually summary plot. So even though Shapley value is an individual, you, you do have a summary plot. Uh, but uh, I did this a while ago, I actually forgot. Uh, you can't actually see why I did this. Uh, I did this eight months ago, sorry, I forgot what it means, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I can't believe I did this eight months ago. Uh, time flies. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I did it just uh, a few months ago, <laughs> but eight months ago, it seemed to be too long. Uh, uh, but yeah, it does show because I don't know how to explain the, the bar here. So uh, the good thing is I, I did leave a link to the original tutorial. Uh, they even have a video here, so how to interpret it. So maybe uh, some of you uh, can look at it. That uh, yeah, this is a very good uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, yeah, I actually this is the one I missed. Uh -huh. There's a JavaScript I didn't run on my uh, part. So, but this is what you're supposed to see. So the blue one are the associate uh, with that uh, label. Red one uh, minus and uh, uh, negatively influenced on the label. So <clears throat> for this input, uh, you see, yeah, so additive, uh, oh, the base value is here. How, how did that happen? The base value blue, is there. Blue indicates lower, red indicates higher, does it? Yeah. It, it, Okay. Uh yes, I. Huh. Uh, the the issues here is uh the base value is here. It seems to be reversed. This figure is reversed. Remember in the paper, the base value is from left to right. But this one, without other feature, you had the base value here. That's where the base value here. Uh, I, I even see I'm moving my mouse here.
base value is at some, somewhere in 0.1618, and then everything goes to negative. Uh, Uh, this is oh, this is a bad quality one. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I was trying to understand like what yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I guess this one is bad. So the blue shows it's going to the, the bad. Okay, it not makes sense. I guess so. Uh, but I don't remember the one quality has a negative value though. How how did that? Uh, goes to negative something. Uh, see the fx minus now 6.32. Minus uh, how did that happen? I, I, I thought we have just value. Oh, I see. Good, bad. Ah, that must be pseudo uh, categorical number somehow. Huh. I've, I don't remember what, at what point I convert that number into something else. Yeah. So I see those are categorical number. Huh. At a certain point, uh, I convert that number to something else. Okay. Oh, I did a label encoding. Mm -hmm. That's how I forgot about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, at a certain point, I did a label encoding, but I don't remember how the good and bad are encoded. Okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess some of you can spend more time on this tutorial. I really understand the, the Shapiro, the <clears throat> Shapiro and our model output. Uh, feature value high is a red, blue is a low. Okay. Blue goes this direction, red goes that direction. Yeah. High alcohol value increase predict the wine quality. Uh, oh, and now it makes sense because uh, we do, yeah, yes, yeah. But this color seems to be just opposite to the paper we just read. That, that paper. I think if you look into the second one, low volatile acidity increases predicted wine quality. So, so volatile acidity is blue. So means like low. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Low increase the predictor. I think it's, it's opposite to the paper. Yeah. Right? I see, I see. There's a positive and negative correlation. So the yeah. low uh low volatility, I say that must be a negative correlation. Yes. Very good. Thank you. I I uh, I now uh, oh I uh, that's how they represent the positive and negative correlation, apparently. Yeah. Very good. Uh okay, uh uh yeah, I mean every time I try to explain that I did learn something new here. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, so uh okay, so. Yeah, it's a very nice plot. I mean, this package, uh, uh, this this PhD student not only did the mathematical proof, and he also generated a very useful, one of the most popular package apparently. So yeah, I think he now works with Google actually. Well, oh, so it's in MSR, Microsoft Research. Amazon. Oh, yeah, sorry, then maybe I remember. Yeah, I, I just looked it up. <laughs> I said he now works at Amazon. Okay, sorry, Google is that. Nemesis of Amazon. <laughs> 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 well, one of those uh, three big things. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't have other things to offer. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I guess the, this, this paper, uh, I'm sure many of you will also use it. Uh, or at least some of you probably will use that at a certain point. Yeah. So. Okay, so we uh we can actually go uh Dr. Sakib, have you look at the, the this they submitted the uh, topic? Are you okay with them? Uh, uh I we can can you share the screen? Look at the, the... yes, one second. Yeah, sure. Uh, for research correction. Yeah. One.
Uh, oh, sorry, it's a long day. <laughs> uh. This, uh, this paper, for the uh, file. yeah, I mean the. Oh, this is a. Seven. No, okay. I mean, you need to spread out. I mean, you 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 pick all the very late prediction that you. I think sometime in February you probably also need to present, but it looks like you pick all very late data. Wait, can you can we go to that spreadsheet? See how many time slot we have. Do we still have a lot of empty slot? Oh. Uh, right. Yeah. I guess we do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so people are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have a a lot of a yes, lot. Uh, yeah. So. We do have a couple like March 19, crazy. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Professor, a spring break. There's a spring uh, break. We certainly can remove that. Uh, Professor, I haven't uh, filled the form yet. Because oh, you haven't filled the form yet? No, Professor. Uh, I'm thinking about like I'm searching the papers right now. I see. So, I see. Like, you know. So. Uh, okay, that's fine. You I'm going like... to do it uh, this week. I see. I see. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we still have one student missing. Okay. One, two, one, three. Two. Six, seven, there are two more slots. I see, I see. Okay, so Nafish, Ami, Simon, Amen, John. Okay, we do. Uh, yes, I see. One, two, three, four. Okay, so. Okay, I mean, if you can put there something there, and that will have less spot. And then there's a spring break, and I guess the. I mean, uh, I mean, if you can put a, a few uh, a, a week wrong, early. The wrong, wrong share? I did I share the wrong one? I think so. Uh, is it? I think that's the correct oh, one. That's the correct one. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that that's the correct one. Yeah, and we may uh leave the last a few days just on the writing. So uh, I mean, I never sure if you. Uh, if all of us can move a little earlier, we can leave the last few weeks as a as a writing, uh, uh, focusing on the writing. So, 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 uh, yeah, so I, I guess we can put it there because the we we did. It it'll be great that we actually write something and put on the archive. Given how many men power, men hours we have put into it. men are women's power. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah. So yeah, uh Amen, can you also pick a bit the early one? Uh so we let's leave. The yes, professor. Time. I can take February thirteen and March nineteen. I'm gonna okay. take these two. I, I think March nineteen is a spring break. Uh, okay, then March twenty six. I'm I'm yeah, good with uh, this uh, too. When is the UTC spring break? Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Oh, March 11 to 17. Okay, actually someone, it looked like someone picked the spring break. Uh, of course, uh, our mistake to put it there at the first place. <laughs> so, yeah, it looked like the, someone picked the spring break for the presentation. Uh, March 12? Yeah, March 12 must be the spring break. Uh, Oh, March 11 to 17. Yeah, this is spring break. March 11 to 17, spring break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's a spring break away. Uh, let's don't do that in spring break. <laughs> That's, uh, so so, so Jack, I'm good to take the March 19 and... Yeah. Okay, March 19 is taken then. So yeah, I'm yeah. going to take uh, February 13 and March 26 then. Yeah, let's cross that out. 
Uh, okay. Uh, that is very good. Yeah. I and then our time seems to be okay. So if if my fish, uh, so a man, uh, a man, a man, and then uh, we move the fish and I mean uh, one way clearly, and then we can say draft paper, draft manuscript, draft manuscript. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just better. Okay, everyone okay? Uh, Nafish and I mean, uh, are, we, are we okay with this? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, I think, I think, yeah, very bad. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm let's just uh let's end for that and hopefully at the end of this we we write some summary and put it on archive it's going to look good for all the graduate students if uh, if we do do that yeah so okay uh have a good evening <laughs> so any other things you want to uh, bring up dr key yeah. no i think it's good yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, bye everyone. Uh, I think did did we record this? Yeah, we did. I will. Uh, by the way, can everybody look at the, the recorded video on Zoom link? Can people, uh, uh, when when you, when you uh go to the announcement, can you uh click on the link and watch? Well, let me let me see. I put that one again. Uh, can people see it? Uh, let me, let me check out the yeah. Well, you probably can see you are the faculty. <laughs> so I was wondering whether the student uh, can see it. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I can. You cannot. I can. I can. You can. But how about student? Uh, uh, Steve, can you see it? You are muted. Uh, you are still muted. Uh. I I haven't figured out where to look, so I I well, haven't seen put it. Putting the chat. I put in the chat. Okay. Yeah. I put in the chat window. I mean, say no. Okay. Uh, then we have an issue. How how do I make it uh, make the student can see it? Uh, oh, they don't. I got a message. This recording does not exist. Copy shareable link. It is saying nine views this month. Someone is looking at this. <laughs> so maybe I have to sign in. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I see. I, I did upload that video directly there. It looked like a yeah, I did upload the video directly into the canvas. So you can actually go to canvas and see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, I sorry, I realized I'm not sharing my screen. So if you go to the canvas and see a circuit lecture video is there. So I uploaded the entire video there. So Okay, I started recording. Uh, yeah. uh, so, okay, so I can uh, I will also upload today's video there, and then the 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 student we can also just continue upload the video directly to the camera side, I guess. Yeah. So, okay, all right. Uh, anyone can see this, right? Yeah, that's just on cameras. So. Yeah. Uh,
The issue is that the cameras actually have a storage limit. Each video, okay. I started recording. Uh, yeah. Each video will be a few hundred. I, I don't know how many videos we can put in there. So, so. <clears throat> But we'll worry about it later on. <laughs> so, but now it works. So, yeah. Okay, everyone, uh, any other questions? So, uh, if not, have a good weekend. Uh, not, well, not a good weekend, Tuesday. <laughs> have a good week. Enjoy the rest Thank of you. it. <laughs> Thank you. So, bye, everyone. So, bye.